Hey guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today we're going to learn about Dmitry Mendeleev. So who was Dmitry Mendeleev, and what were his contributions to chemistry? Well, it says right here that Dmitry Mendeleev was a Russian-born scientist that lived in the 18 and 1900s, and he was the first person to create a periodic table of elements in, uh, in 1868. Okay, so Dmitry Mendeleev is credited with uh, developing the very first periodic table of elements. All right, and he also used his periodic table of elements to predict the properties of elements that had yet to be discovered. So he left blank spaces in his periodic table based on his research. Um, he knew the physical and chemical properties of these elements that have yet to be discovered. And he also formulated what is said right here, the periodic law. All right, so periodic law and Dmitry Mendeleev state that, hey, if you order the uh, atoms uh, in order of increasing atomic weight, then what you'll start to notice is uh, over time a, uh, a, a repeat of different patterns in physical and chemical properties. So if you order the atoms or elements by atomic weight, then what you'll end up seeing is a recurring pattern in their physical and chemical properties. All right, so important, some important things uh, regarding Dmitry Mendeleev. It says right here that by 1868, there were only about 60 known elements, with new elements being discovered at a rate of about one a year. All right, and today we know that there's about 115 elements. So in 1868, when he developed his first periodic table, there's only about 60 known elements. Okay, and his whole point or purpose was to somehow classify elements by their chemical properties. Okay. And uh, once again, he says right here that if, uh, uh, if the elements are arranged uh, in order of their atomic weight, then they're going to exhibit an apparent periodicity of properties or a repeat of patterns in their physical and chemical properties. All right, so what he does in his table is he figures out that elements that are in the same group, and we talked, we'll talk about what groups are here in a moment, that they have very similar uh, chemical properties. Uh, also, he says right here, or he's quoted as saying that I saw in a dream where all elements fell into place as required awakening. I immediately wrote it down on a piece of paper. Only in one place did a correction later seem necessary. Okay, so Dmitry Mendeleev was a Russian scientist who was credited with developing the very first periodic table of elements. He came up with this idea of periodic law. And he even left some blank spaces in his periodic table based on his research that he figured uh, elements that have yet to be discovered would fall in. So let's take a look at Dmitry Mendeleev's periodic table. All right, if we take a look at uh, Dmitry Mendeleev's very first periodic table, it looks a lot different than the periodic table that we see today. Uh, with only about 60 or so elements known at the time, this is what it looked like. This was his periodic table. And uh, as you see right here, we have group one, group two. So groups are the vertical columns on the periodic table. And so what uh, Dmitry Mendeleev says is he says, hey, if you're in the same group like lithium, sodium, potassium, and rubidium, then you're going to have very similar uh, chemical properties as well as uh, some similar physical properties as well. And what made Mendeleev's periodic table of elements so ingenious was that he he left a bunch of blank spots, as you can see by these red circles here. Blank spots in his periodic table of elements that, based on his research, he figured were just elements that had yet to be discovered. And in fact, when they were discovered many years later, they did exhibit the, the same chemical and physical properties that uh, Dmitry Mendeleev had predicted. And they would even end up falling into the spot that he left blank for them. So pretty smart guy, pretty uh, ingenious uh, table. And so now let's take a look at... Uh, today's periodic table of elements and go through a few things. Okay, so here's today's periodic table as it stands. We have about 115 uh, known elements or so. And if we take a look, the very first thing you need to know are that uh, periods or rows are the horizontal rows on the periodic table. For example, this would be period or row one consisting of hydrogen and helium. This would be period or row two consisting of lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. This is uh, row three. This would be row four or period four. Here is period five or row five, six, and seven, and there we go. Okay, so periods or rows are the horizontal rows on the periodic table, and groups or families are the vertical columns on the periodic table. For example, here is group one from hydrogen down to francium, group two, uh, beryllium down to radium, family three, family four, group five, etc., etc., all the way down to group 18. Now, why are they called families? Well, uh, members of family, uh, members in your family and you have very uh, similar 
physical characteristics, right? You might look like your cousin or you might look like your brother. Well, if you're in the same family on the periodic table of elements, you have very similar physical and chemical properties. So that's probably why they're called uh, families, okay? So that's the first thing you need to know is that periods or rows go uh, run left to right or horizontal on the periodic table, whereas groups or families are vertical. Let's look at a few more things. All right, if we take a look at a few more things, uh, very first thing is this little zigzag line right here. This red zigzag line kind of separates the periodic table of elements. It's called the Zintel border, if you want to get uh, specific about it. But everything to the left of this stair step line, everything to the left, all of these over here, as well as these right here, with the exception of hydrogen, everything to the left of the stair step line is going to be a metal. And we'll talk about what metals are and some of their physical characteristics in a later video. Everything to the right of the stair step line is going to be a non metal. And we'll talk about some of their physical and uh, or their physical characteristics in a later video as well. All right, so everything to the left is a metal, everything to the right is a non metal. So you can see that most of the elements are in fact metals. A few things you also need to know is that there are different groups on the periodic tables consisting of different names. For example, from lithium all the way down to francium here. These are known as the alkali metals. Hydrogen is an exclusion. Hydrogen is not a metal. It exhibits very similar chemical properties as, uh, as the alkali metals, so it's placed here, but it's really not a metal. And on some periodic tables, you'll actually see hydrogen placed right here. All right, so these are the alkali metals from lithium down to francium, the alkaline earth metals from beryllium down to radium. Uh, the transition metals from groups 3 all the way through 12 are the transition metals. You have the boron group in group 13, the carbon group in group 14, the nitrogen group in group 15, the oxygen group in group 16. You have the halogens in group 17, the, no the noble gases in group 18. Okay, so those are some important groups that you need to become familiar with, and we'll talk about each one of these in a different video, some of their physical and chemical properties and things like that. If you take a look right here, if you fall directly on the periodic table of elements, you're a metalloid or semi-metal with the exception of a few of them, like aluminum is technically a metal, it's not a metalloid. However, for the most part, the general rule, with the exception of a couple of them, is that if you lie directly on the stair step line here, you are a metalloid or semi-metal. All right, down here at the bottom, you have the lanthanide series. We'll talk about the lanthanides in a later video. Uh, the physical and chemical properties of those. And then at the bottom here, you have the actinides. And we'll talk about the physical and chemical properties of some of those. Another thing you should also take a look at are the different colors. For example, uh, most of the elements are in black, right? They're black. What does black mean? Well, black means that they're solids at room temperature. Red means that they're gases at room temperature. And blue means that they're liquids at room temperature. Okay, so mercury is a metal, but it is also a liquid at room temperature. And most of the elements on the periodic table are solids at room temperature. Okay, so uh, one last thing. If you take a look at each little box here, here's the chemical symbol for the element. Uh, you'll notice that if the chemical symbol has two letters, then the first letter is always uppercase, the uh, second letter is always lowercase. If the element symbol only has one letter, then it's going to be uh, capitalized or uppercase. All right, if we take a look at the top, you have the atomic number. This is the number of protons that are in the nucleus of that atom. Uh, if you take a look at the number at the bottom, this is the average atomic mass, and we'll talk about what that means. But this here is the average mass of all known isotopes of that element, okay? So uh, also we have right here the electronegativity on this periodic table of elements. That might or might not be there on some of the periodic tables that you uh, you take a look at. And we'll talk about what that means as well. All right, so that's Dmitry Mendeleev uh, and his periodic table. And this is today's periodic table. Become familiar with the periodic table. Know where you find the metals and the non-metals. Know that potassium is an alkali metal. Know that magnesium is an alkaline earth metal and that fluorine is say a halogen all right so if you like what you see go ahead and click the little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you and feel free to leave any comments in the comment section down below and i hope you found this helpful